132,000, Melissa, ADP using new methodology to calculate uh, the change in payrolls over the course of the months is 132,000 jobs were created. That is uh, less than half of the 268,000 from July uh, under the new methodology as well. Good sector uh, up by 24,000 and the service sector up by 104,000. We are able to get some of the same calculations from the uh, prior survey as well. Uh, so small business, 25,000, and you can see double that for both medium and large size businesses. Looking at it by sector, again, the rebound in the leisure and hospitality sector does continue. Uh, trade, transport, utilities up by 54,000. Leisure and hospitality, by the way, up by 96,000 for you radio listeners. You can't see the full screens there. Uh, interestingly, education health services were down by 15,000. I can't tell for sure if that's a seasonal adjustment issue or indeed they have had some strong hiring there. Manufacturing unchanged, perhaps picking up some of the weakness that we've seen in some of the manufacturing surveys. And now a new addition to this survey here, uh, median pay change, which we're going to be getting on a monthly basis. For those in the same job, uh, year over year up 7.6%. But look at that for job changers. This is picking up something we've seen in other data as well, up 16% if you change jobs. So, uh, Melissa and Joe, I don't know if that's something you guys have been thinking about, but certainly if you did, you'd be in the double digits, at least in this market. By the way, that job stayers number is also a bit higher than the government numbers. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry in the back if they want to bring in Neela Richardson, the chief economist for ADP right now. But uh, if she's there, we can start to talk to her. Uh, Neela, are you there? Can you hear me? I'm here and I'm ready to talk. Good morning, everyone. All right, Neela, thanks for joining us. I, I think the first thing is, um, my best guess is, is investors don't really care to understand how the mousetrap was created. Uh, they just want to know, is it better? And so if you could, in, 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 a, in, in a concise way, tell us what is different about this new ADP report and why it's better in your opinion. It's independent and it's not a forecast of what you'll see on Friday. So the last time we talked, Steve, we had that beautiful Grand Tetons uh, backdrop. And we look at this as a different picture of the same landscape of, a, of employment. We're basing it and highlighting and focusing on the ADP micro data, which includes over 25 million workers. We then reweight it to represent national averages based on national and more comprehensive data. So the key here is it's independent. And the key in this release is that we're seeing the second straight months of a slowdown in the ADP the numbers under this new methodology. Neil, let me just go back a little bit because the old methodology used the former BLS data, it used some other economic indicators in addition to the ADP data. That's so right. are we seeing more of a raw change in your data? And as you said, you guys are servicing at 25 million employees on payroll, which if I'm not mistaken on any given month is bigger than what the BLS is showing us. Right. We have a large and comprehensive fine grain data set uh, that we can match in a lot of ways the distribution that you're seeing in the official data. So we are confident that we can highlight our, our micro data and reweight it for national averages that looking at the a model-based approach, the way we did it before, right. to forecast a number uh, that is driven from a survey in the BLS uh, source data was not the best use of our data. We feel that this approach, looking at the scale of ADP data and using it directly, transparently, and independently to perform right. a private sector view, gives you a different lens of the labor market that is valuable in our current discussion of where the sure. health of the economy is right now. 